Hey folks, welcome back. We got a crank no start on this 2006 Ford F250 with the 6 liter, so let's get uh, checking out and see what's going on. Okay, so apparently this thing was a uh, no, so it was a crank no start um, while hot was the first symptom that they got, and it just got worse and worse and harder and harder to start, and pretty much it's uh, crank and no start uh, no matter what now. So let's. Um, the reason we're making this video is basically to uh, show you the importance of actually pulling the plugs and checking wiring and whatnot. Okay, so with the 6 liter, um, these are pretty much what I've got here on this screen. Um, you're pretty much, uh, besides the, well, I guess the, the switch B plus or whatever there, you're pretty much going to find everything that's wrong um, with one of these things. Um, with everything that's on here on a crank no start, you're pretty much going to be like, okay, um, out of any of this, this possibly could be the issue. So, um, let's go ahead and cycle this key. Okay, the injectors are doing their thing. You kind of want to listen to them. They're decent. I've heard lots better. We'll go ahead and crank and start this. Okay, so we had what 1300 psi on here. This was at uh, what 85 percent. We did have our sink, our voltage never dropped uh, below, I think it's 45. Um, watch Diesel Tech Ron's channel for these six liters, he's phenomenal. Um, I've learned a lot from him, but um, I've just never seen him cover this particular deal, so that's why I'm doing it, anyway. So we had the 13, um, <clears throat> the percentage of our IPR was at 85%, which means, you know, it's it's trying to build up pressure. The IPR is saying, hey, I'm doing my job. Um, the ICP's basically not. So basically everything, look here, you might be kind of dumbfounded as to what, you know, this thing really should start. It's kind of got everything it needs to, needs to start. Oh, look at that. We don't even have the ICP plugged in. Um, I did that on purpose. Um, let's go ahead and plug this in, and I will show you... Okay, we'll plug that in. Okay, cycle this key back off. Let the I usually always just let the injectors do their thing before I crank and start these. Um, but have a look, see now when we crank this and see what changes. All right, we. To have our sink still our voltage is good our incoming voltage is good um, always check that because when you're doing any of this kind of troubleshooting with these six liters um, you want to have your batteries uh, powered up really good because if they're not powered up really good if you're getting anything below like nine and a half volts during cranking and all that kind of stuff a lot of things aren't going to work correctly anyway so we had uh, 85 percent on our ipr percentage no injector control psi so this is actually what we would have seen because now we've got a functioning um, ICP sensor and the ICP sensor is actually reading what's going on. There is no pressure. Um, with it unplugged, it kind of just defaults to that uh, um, 1300. I've never seen it before on these. I can't remember what they are in the 7.3s, but the 7.3 is one of the um, troubleshooting steps you can do is if you had a no start would be to unplug the ICP and see if it uh, comes back you know where it starts or whatever um, so basically what you know even though the computer before with the ICP sensor unplugged thought that we had th 1300 psi of pressure there still wasn't actually any pressure and that's why the thing wouldn't start so that's why you got to check the plugs and wirings let me show you what I found Okay, so before I even got to this this deal, this was the plug, um, and this is how it looked when I pulled it out. Um, minus, I mean, it had wires actually on it. Um, I clipped these off to uh, <clears throat> install the new one. Um, but it was on here, and then what was stuck way down inside of there was this, and I'll show you what this is supposed to look like. Um, was this kind of a little little cage thing um, but you know also notice there's something missing from here too okay this is what it's supposed to look like that white cage deal goes around here protects the uh, terminals and all that 
and then we got an actual clip on here so basically with this thing just it was plugged in and sitting on there but it was not making any contact to make that ICP be able to do its job and tell the ECM what the heck's going on so that's why it went to the you know default of 1300 psi give or take and but we we had no oil. we we've got no oil pressure in this thing and so therefore it's not going to start um and so that's why um it's important to you know even if you see something plugged in and you know you need to actually unplug it inspect it look at it make sure that you know there's nothing wrong with it because as soon as i pulled it out and realized this cage was gone and then looked down in there and saw it there and then i looked at the terminals and said oh well there's no way this thing's going to get decent connection and it's also missing the the snap deal to you know to snap it in place where it keeps it plugged in um it's just you're asking for trouble there so always check the wiring and then i'll show you one more uh tip for uh, low l pressure i mean first thing you obviously got to do is check the oil because you got to have oil in it in order to make it start um one of the things you can do while cranking it we're going to watch the uh, oil pressure gauge you want to see that thing go up because you want to see it have base oil pressure um, and this is a decent way to to test it so when we go ahead and crank it we'll see that go up okay so that'll let you know that you've got got base oil pressure we've got oil in it we don't have uh oil pressure that's why this thing ain't starting um we on a for this being a 2005 or six or whatever uh pretty much i guess 2005 and up it's very rarely the uh, high pressure oil pump it's most likely the uh, little uh dummy plugs and or the stand pipes but mostly just the dummy plugs inside of there not too bad get underneath there with the um underneath valve covers and and replace them the o-rings go bad and that's most likely what we got going on here um anyway so that's that's the trick there, or the tip I just want to give you about talking about um, the uh, you know checking the wiring and make sure that that stuff is good to all your your various sensors and all that type of stuff. Because if I you know would have gone through here and if not you know used to I'm used to working on these things, but if someone were to actually get you know a scan scan tool and they're looking at all of it, and you can do this with them little little scan gauge things and and other little uh, like a like Torque Pro, you can put that on your phone and you can you can diagnose these things um, just using those four or five parameters right there. If you got a no start, um, it's pretty simple actually, and. Um, Oh, but it, you know, with that ICP, you know, with the plug plugged in, like it was when I found it, um, if I hadn't checked that or did anything with it, I would have just, you know, a person could just be like, well, heck, I got everything I needed to have. Why won't this thing start? Um, you know, then you're, then you're into, uh, you know, you could be into, uh, no fuel pressure and, you know, this, that, and the other, but we don't have that issue. Our issue is this fact that this thing will not, uh, build the at least 500 PSI, um, to get this thing to start and idle, it needs needs 500 at least, but it should be up around seven, eight, maybe a thousand uh, during cranking and and where, when it tries to start. So, anyways, um, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Um, check that wiring. Anyways, thanks for watching.